Hey, welcome in. This is FST. It's Fantasy Sports Today. My name is Matt, and while it may be allergy season for me, his name is Joe, and he's clicking on all cylinders. This may very well be the most important show of the year. Now, hear my words. There's going to be a lot of information, so do it with me at SportsGrid and at SportsGrid TV. Really quickly, those are our social media handles. Make sure you jump on and follow along because we are going to lay down so much for you here. Not just about the big game, but everything you need to dominate. There's no other person with whom I'd rather take this ride than Mr. Joe Pizzapia. My friend, first and foremost, mm, big love to you. Secondly, what's up? You ready to get big? Oh, I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. Uh, I'm going to leave that one alone because I think that'll get us kicked off the air before the show even starts. But here we are, everybody. Fantasy Sports Today, a fun look ahead to the early 2024 rankings in hour one. That's what we're going to do today, which is, you know, some people say, what are you ranking guys now for? Well, there's a lot of reasons, because if you are in dynasty leagues and keeper leagues, you have to kind of understand where your assets are. And if you're in startup leagues that are going to be figuring out their dynasty drafts somewhere around, oh, I don't know, the NFL draft that's coming up in just a few months, guess what? You're going to want to have to have all these names in place. So you know exactly how to approach these. Now, these aren't necessarily dynasty ranks. They're redraft ranks, but so you can get an idea of what we're looking at. And that's going to be our one of the program today. So we're going to go through all of the positions here. We're going to hit the quarterbacks, the tight ends, the wide receivers, and of course, the running backs as well. And then in hour two, we're going to do some look aheads as well to maybe some players that had better seasons than they possibly could have expected and maybe can't repeat them in 2024 because that's always the worst, Matt. There's nothing worse. And when somebody pops that you're not expecting and the next thing you know, you're chasing last year's productivity and that's never a good thing. We're also going to talk a little dynasty as well in terms of buy lows because there's a lot of players coming off of down seasons. And as everybody can see, the coaching carousel has basically come to a close here. Still some coordinators to be figured out, but that's going to have a big impact on some of these other players who might be able to turn their 2023 failures into 2024 successes. But let's talk about the headlines because I think there's a game next week. I think there's one more, Matt. I don't know if anyone's going to be talking about it, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Chiefs and the 49ers because they're going to be playing in the Super Bowl next Sunday. And of course, stay on Sports Grid for all the coverage. We're going to be live there from Vegas. Somebody check on those guys. I don't know how they're going to make it through Vegas during the Super Bowl, but hopefully there's lots of hydration stations and some other things for those guys. Lamar Jackson, what a season for him, but another playoff disappointment. Questions now linger about Lamar Jackson's ability to get to the big game. So we can touch on that today. Also, something to be important is uh, Dan Campbell. Uh, I think the remnants of that final game there where the Detroit Lions got up early, the Detroit Lions just had to kick some field goals and play a little bit of safe football, and were unable to do that. Um, To me, that is a big red flag. It's maybe something you learn the hard way as a coach. And when you get in the playoffs, you can't do the same things that you do necessarily in the regular season. But it's one of those things that people used to hate Bill Belichick about all the time. Oh, all he does is play field position. All he does is take points. You know why? Because that equates to <laughs> wins. Uh, so yeah. it might be boring, folks. But winning, winning doesn't get boring. Also, we're back to the Chiefs again. The Chiefs are an underdog again, Matt. When will they learn the two and a half point underdogs minus 115 on FanDuel right now? I said it two weeks ago. I said it last week. All I kept saying was the same thing. What? The Chiefs are the underdog. When the Chiefs are the underdog, they're incredibly dangerous. When you tell them, hey, you're not the top of the mountain anymore, you are putting Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid in a really interesting pole position. So let's talk about that because this is a disrespect of a Chiefs team. (laughs) <laughs> that's gone out there and won a bunch of Super Bowls as opposed to the 49ers right. who haven't done that yet. Well, here's the thing. Understand this is the most publicly wagered upon event. Is that correct? I believe and our producers will check that. Actually, I think there's a, a horse race. It's that and March Madness. There, I think March right. Madness might be because of the so, volume. Throughout of the yeah. world, though. But yes, mm-hmm. with that said, we here on this network are always all about 
fading all of that and trying to wade through the public. So it's a perfect setup by you, Joe, because there is so much public money coming in on this game, so much public narrative coming in on this game, so much regurgitated information, lack of true knowledge, guys like you and other people here that sit and watch every down, every play and talk about next season now versus the talking head that's going to go on there and say, oh, yeah, no, Travis Kelsey, he's really good. So we have to be super aware of that. And when it comes down to it, when I see something like that, your eyes see the same thing I do. Why are they down there? Why? Because they want that money to come in. This game is going to be a lot tighter than people think. And outside of all the conspiracy theories, having them, the Chiefs, as underdogs definitely plays into the windfall of revenue and handle that comes in on this game. Well, I'm looking at what I've seen so far in the playoffs. And what I've seen so far in the playoffs is a team in the Kansas City Chiefs that had a rough regular season that got their sub-zero Fine. temperatures at home, remembered who they were, beat up on the Dolphins, right? Then they were underdogs, went on the road, won. Then they were underdogs again, went on the road, won. Uh, so last time I checked, the Chiefs are getting it done. And then there's the 49ers who had the bye. And then they, let's be honest, squeaked by a mm-hmm. Green Bay Packers team that should have won that football game. At Fine. home, they almost lost to the Packers. They got their butts kicked in the first half of that game. Now, all credit to them. They came back in the second half. But Dan Campbell, had he just managed that game properly, would have at least sent that game into an overtime, if not come out the winner. So I'm watching this team that's got these two home games. And I know it's a different team that lost to the Kansas City Chiefs a couple years ago because CMC was not on that squad. I understand that. It's a little bit different when you're adding one of the best weapons in football to your roster. Certainly that changes things. But Brock Purdy has not looked great in these playoffs. I know he made some plays here and there. But let's be honest, the consistency there has not been. So you're telling me, Matt, once again, that Andy Reid, one of the winningest coaches in the NFL, a guy who's been dominating over the last five years, along with Patrick Mahomes, arguably the best quarterback in the NFL over the last five, six years. You're telling me they're underdogs in the Super Bowl? I don't get it. I'm telling I don't you get why. it. I didn't get of it last Of course week. you don't. I don't get because it. Because you're I an educated eye. Two weeks in a row, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm just going to yes. last in the bank. That's what I'm going to do. As, as you should, it's smarter on sports grid. That's not just a catchphrase, a marketing thing that someone in Ivory Tower said, let's say that every six seconds. No, it makes total sense. So every here's a, here's a rule with sports wagering. If your mom or someone that really isn't into it, I use it as an example, says anything to you about a game or anything in there, watch that because it means it's become public. This game with all of this national attention, people are forgetting a lot of things and I'm with you. Also, some new coaches, uh, obviously, over the last week. Brian Callahan uh, uh, is going to be along with uh, Dan Quinn over at Tennessee Titans. Uh, Dave Canales, mm-hmm. uh, Carolina Panthers, new head coach. We have Jim Harbaugh oh, nice. taking over the reins in Los Angeles. So Harbaugh leaves Michigan, which everybody anticipated this was going to be the year that happened, and it did. We obviously had uh, Mike McDonald take the new job with the Seahawks. We know about Gerard Mayo, Raheem Morris, and Antonio Pierce. Uh, a few weeks ago so that's good also good for the league to see a little bit more diversity in the head coachings uh hirings in the last couple uh weeks as well so that's a good thing for the league but again there's a whole new shuffle of coaches and Vrabel and Belichick are the guys outside looking in not sure how that happened either a lot of curiosities here this morning on a Sunday in February we come back a look at the early ranks of quarterbacks on our best team. is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back-to-back leads point one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs, but I bet on it. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left, the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about evenly played it to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit. But, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. 
only on Sports Grid. Get to the big news here. Uh, a big push for, for Georgia to get things going as far as legalized sports betting. And, and Pat, I don't want to get people too excited. It's not like this is happening this year. The Senate version and the House version, and then they're going to have to get a couple of people from each chamber together and kind of wrestle out the details of what exactly sports betting in Georgia might look like. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. I can tell you, like, Las Vegas is heavy San Francisco um, territory. All right, there are a ton of Niner fans, man, in Las Vegas and, in, in, you know, in Nevada, and specifically Reno. Reno, well, Reno's close, obviously, right? So, like, Reno, Reno's numbers will be a little bit different. But the total of 47 and a half, I get it. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means. Individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not fought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they In are. game live. Just prime time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race that was late bad. night. We waited for a one and a half. We got a baby. Yeah. Then like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in FST Fantasy Sports today. Matt and Joe having a great time already. Hope you're smiling as well wherever you may be. Talking, obviously, about the big game, discussing just just the odds alone and how they are reflective of how public the game is. But all in all, Joe, I think it goes down to having the inside eye, having that keen sports sense, which you have a unique grasp upon. I think the reason you have that is because your ability to look ahead. And that's what we're going to do here. Early 2024 quarterback and tight end rankings. But let's try to apply the conversation as we go on to to thoughts for the big game and how, because wagering to me is is always going to be at the front of my mind, how this type of mindset can lend itself to perhaps the big game. So let's start at the top and I'll I'll let you take it away here. Mm -hmm. Number one quarterback for next year assumes to be... Josh Allen, uh, who is the same guy (laughs) as... I don't know if you were announcing it and doing the drum roll. If yeah, I was supposed to announce it, Steve clearly I missed rehearsal either. this week for the show. <laughs> clearly that's what yes. happened. But look, yes, it's, it's Josh Allen at the top again. Um, can he yeah. repeat the 15 rushing touchdowns from last year? Probably not. Um, can Jalen Hurts at number two? Probably not. Now, Hurts is the one right now. Again, these are the expert consensus rankings you can find over at fantasypros.com uh, where you get all the experts from different places putting in their ranks. Now, these aren't my rankings that's necessarily great. because – I do believe that Jalen Hurts could potentially struggle next year. Now, let's see how mm-hmm. the offense shakes out. Uh, I think you saw at times some regression from Hurts from what you saw without Shane Steichen this past season. He clearly missed the play calling, clearly missed that coordinator. And I think it showed in the Eagles defense this year. I mean, excuse me, the Eagles offense this year. So regardless, because of the rushing equity and the rushing touchdowns they bring, it's something to keep in mind. Now, also, if Jason Kelsey should retire and all of a sudden that tush push is not quite what it used to be, some of those rushing touchdowns might not be there as well. So that uh, the brotherly shove that has been so popular here, which has gotten him so many touchdowns at the goal line, seriously, it might be a little bit trickier. So these are the small details that sometimes I think you have to wrap your mind around when you start looking at players. Now, Lamar Jackson had a great season last year. Uh, <clears throat> Lamar Jackson, MVP worthy. We're still waiting on all that. Uh, but, you know, 3,678 yards passing. He had 24 touchdowns, just seven interceptions. You saw the emergence of Isaiah Likely, and you saw the emergence of Zay Flowers uh, in 2023, and I think those big pieces will be there for him next year. 
I'm not sure about Mark Andrews, though. I think Likely played well enough that maybe Andrews is gone. Uh, he finishes QB3 now, just for comparison. He had just five rushing touchdowns. They had 800 yards rushing, which is an enormous number. So remember, no matter how good a quarterback is, even if they're a little bit on the mediocre side sometimes in terms of passer rating or other things, if they're rushing and getting rushing touchdowns, they are just very valuable. As we continue to move through this list, too, in the QB1s, you have Patrick Mahomes at four, Dak Prescott at five, C.J. Stroud at six, and then Anthony Richardson at seven. Richardson's the guy that I want to circle, Matt, because this kid has that ability to be a top three fantasy quarterback. Now, it doesn't always have to look pretty, but we're talking about a guy with phenomenal size, speed, athleticism, arm strength. He's got all the tools. Unfortunately, it's going to take him a little bit longer because of the injury in 2023, so we're not going to see him for a while and hopefully in 2024 he is going to be healthy and ready to go and it's unfortunate that his season was cut short because he's going to miss that developmental time but at the same time it's hard not to watch some of the tape of what you saw already from anthony richardson in his rookie season and not get very excited because there's every reason to believe that you could draft a guy again in the expert consensus ranking going around the seventh quarterback taken overall and he could finish his top three Mahomes certainly the guy that could finish his top three. Dak Prescott, a phenomenal season. We'll see if it's repeatable. Stroud is interesting here because, you know, he he outplayed so many people's expectations, not necessarily mine, because we know on the show here I was a big fan heading into the draft, heading into the season. He was a great QB2 option, I told everybody. But at the same time, now he has to perform up to an expectation level, which is going to be a different challenge. I think Stroud is up for it. But when you put Richardson and Stroud back to back like that, in terms of fantasy, I'm going to take Richardson, even though there's a little bit more potential uh, volatility. I think Richardson has that athleticism and that rushing capability that just breaks fantasy leagues. And as much as I love C.J. Stroud, I don't know if his productivity is necessarily that different potentially from a guy like a healthy Kirk Cousins at the end of the day. Because C.J. Stroud finished as QB 13 this year, and now he's being ranked as QB 6. I think that's a little early. Do you think I'm crazy to love Anthony Richardson as much Mm. as I do? No, I, I think what you love is the the hope, the ceiling, the, oh, this can be good. You've dated Stroud, you've tasted its cooking, so now maybe you're saying this is the fickle way we live our lives these days. No, 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 it's, it's, it's something to behold, man. We live in a generation now, everything, bang, bang, give it to me, I'm done, give it to me, I'm done. Consumption is big. Also looking at guys from 6 to 10 on this list, when you talk about Stroud Richardson, you also have to look at the, the weapons around them, the compliments. But uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people are going to be far more comfortable with the devil they know as opposed to the devil they don't. But I'm with you just with the hope of the flashes yeah. of what mm-hmm. we've seen that Richardson can do. It's very, very exciting. John. Yeah, I think the point where there's Richardson in the single quarterback league, too, is that you draft him. And then if you're really concerned, you draft a a guy later on a stand in the pocket quarterback and we'll get to some of those names later yeah you, you, you draft a guy like a, a trevor lawrence maybe or a jared goff and or matthew stafford to cover yourself and you're fine Superflex is a little different so as you finish out the ranks obviously justin fields at eight we'll see where he ends up joe burrow hopefully he bounces back from the injury at nine herbert at 10 purdy at 11 and kyler murray at 12 i think purdy is slightly overrated but again i understand it's the offense it's the system stupid so let's get to qb twos here because jordan love there's a guy at 13 that I don't know how he can be at 13 right now. I, I, I would have him higher on my board. And as we get you know, into the weeks ahead, we'll talk about my rankings as well. But this guy finishes QB5. Uh, and somehow he's at 13. I don't get that. Uh, so I think that's something that's going to change the longer people have to start to look into what happened last year. And right. I get it. You know, Purdy and Burrow and all those guys, you know, you, you want to put them as QB1s. But Jordan Love, especially down the stretch in the second half, he played like a true QB1. Uh, after that, speaking of second halves, to Tungo Vailoa at 14, faded in the second half. Another guy that's more of a system quarterback, and I think that's the danger of a Brock Purdy, is they can be hot sometimes and cold the other times, depending on injuries to the surrounding pieces, because they're not guys that elevate the talent around them. They're guys that are fitting what is going on in the system. There's a difference between that and a difference between a guy like C.J. Stroud. Trevor Lawrence at 15. I think it's time for Lawrence to take a step forward here. We've been waiting for a long time. He has the ability to be a top five quarterback in this league. I I don't say that easily, but he needs to take that step forward. So whatever that takes, and I know he's younger, I get that. Stafford and Goff here at 16 and 17. They have Kirk Cousins, who we'll see where he ends up here. Deshaun Watson at 19. Aaron Rodgers, both coming back from injury. Then Geno Smith, Baker Mayfield, uh, Daniel Jones, and Derek Carr round out the top 24. So 
a lot of veterans, a lot of questions. So Superflex could be dicey again in 2024. And then when you look at the tight end list, you got Sam Laporta at the top right now on the ECR over at Fantasy Pros. Kelsey's still the man, but <clears throat> obviously the age of Kelsey is starting to creep in a little bit. He's not showing it in the playoffs, but again, we've got to look ahead and project a little bit. So him at two, I don't have a problem with. Mark Andrews at three is interesting. If he's not in Baltimore, I think that ranking is going to change dramatically depending on where he ends up. Trey McBride, though, the volume you saw to him is tight end four, tremendous. And Joku's a player we'll talk a little bit about later. He is top five right now. George Kittle, Evan Ingram, Dalton Kincaid, who had some nice flashes at tight end eight in the ECR. Then Dallas Goddard, TJ Hawkinson, Ferguson, and Kyle Pitts. Now, Hawkinson, I think, will drop out of this top ten because he won't be ready probably for the start of the season. That would be my guess. But that's another player to watch because he was so good with Kirk Cousins. It's unfortunate that injury occurred when it did. But if you look at the tight end ranks, you're seeing a position now that is so much healthier than it was last year. Mm -hmm. Last year going into the draft, there were so many unknowns, so many young players. Like You don't even see a Luke Musgrave on this list. You don't even see a couple guys, too, that really, you know, towards the end of the year started to pop a little bit. So, And you're going to have Brock Bowers coming into the league this year. So he's going to potentially crack that top 12 as well. So the good news is that there's a lot more tight ends and fantasy going into 2024 that you can feel good about. The bad news is there's still some uncertainty of the health of Travis Kelsey in terms of his age and where he's starting to decline, maybe, and also how these young guys can possibly repeat what you saw in 2023. So when we come back, we're going to shift gears to the running back plan to take a look at that group right here on the screen. Super Bowl is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back to back, at least going one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs, but I bet on it. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about evenly equated to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit. Going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> the big news here a, a big push for for georgia to get things going as far as legalized sports betting and, and pat i don't want to get people too excited it's not like this is happening this year the senate version and the house version and then they're gonna have to get a couple of people from each chamber together and kind of wrestle out the details of what exactly sports betting in georgia might look like newswire only on sports grid I can tell you, like, Las Vegas is heavy San Francisco um, territory. All right? There are a ton of Niner fans, man, in Las Vegas and, in, in, you know, in Nevada, and specifically Reno. Reno, well, Reno's close, obviously, right? So, like, Reno, Reno's numbers will be a little bit different. But the total of 47 and a half, I get it. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means, individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not fought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news, trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterback. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. I have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they in game live Just prime a time yard for a grand slam in the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game we got football scores going on at Wrigley right now sports race that was late bad. night we waited for a one and a half we got paid we did. And did like a two and a half what? jumped on there's no taking weeks off in golf not even ever these are the best weeks to bet 
It's smarter to be on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in FST Fantasy Sports Today. Matt and Joe with you here, giving you everything you need in order to dominate. That's what it's all about, domination. Looking forward is a big thing as well. I think that's in Sun Tzu, The Art of War. I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. I probably also say that's a big thing. But anyway, um, early 2024 running, a big thing is <laughs> running back rankings. <laughs> when I get a laugh from Joe, I know I'm on the right track. Um, early rankings, no surprise at the top. But for me, my eyes kind of went you know, at number two. <laughs> Joe, Christian McCaffrey's at the top. Brees Hall at number two on it with a healthy Aaron Rodgers. Really, I could see this happening. Thoughts? Uh, you know, I, I was Googling all the Sun Tzu quotes that were like, right? Or, you know, like, I think he says that a lot at the end. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, know thyself, know thy enemy, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, a big, it's a big deal, <laughs> this right? This is a funny bit. I like this. <laughs> like, like, Sun Tzu grew up I in Lodi. the Art of War. <laughs> it's a good read. Everybody should read the Art of War. It's a very sure. good read, yeah. Uh, a little Sun Tzu, a little Machiavelli. It's Sunday morning, folks. Too. Come on, kids. All right, let's get to the running backs here. These are the expert consensus rankings over at fantasybros.com. Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> no doubt, obviously at the top of these rankings. But uh, again, he, he, he come to another season here where he was absolutely spectacular. He was the RB1. He had 21 touchdowns, 1,400 rushing yards, 500 plus receiving yards. I mean, there's no place that isn't going to have Christian McCaffrey won. And he's earned that rank. He's still a running back. There's still volatility there. There's still injury quotient. He's another year older. He still has all these playoffs and a Super Bowl, so there's extra mileage on the season, too. It's not going to change the rank. He's going to be the consensus number one. What's interesting here is the consensus number two, and it's Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall had nine rushing touchdowns this year, which is uh, pretty much what the Jets had, I mean, at some point in terms of their (laughs) touchdowns. It's about 50% of all the touchdowns that team had as a whole. And everyone is thinking, hey, Aaron Rodgers healthy, Aaron Rodgers back. Much better situation. The only caution here that I have when it comes to this situation is that, you know, he does run a, uh, you know, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers isn't known for his pace of play. Let's put it that way. Right. You know, it's very slow. It's very methodical. Sometimes that does right. kind of stun some of the offensive potential, uh, but that probably works well with the jets because you want to play defense, run yeah. the football. Yeah. It's, it's the dynamic that's going to lead this team to success is what they wanted to do last year and couldn't because Aaron Rodgers couldn't get through the first series of the season. But <clears throat> Brees Hall being number two, <laughs> oops, did I say that? Yo, oops, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Brees Hall number two uh, makes sense. Uh, it is a little bullish for my taste. You'll see my boy Bijan at number three. I think with Arthur Smith gone, we're all thinking good things for Bijan Robinson yeah. this year. And Bijan Robinson, you know, <clears throat> people say, oh, you know, it, it was disappointing. It was, but I don't think he was disappointing. I think Arthur Smith was disappointing. Like if you watch Bijan Robinson. Point. B. John Robinson was spectacular last year when he was given the opportunities. The problem is giving him the opportunities. He still had 487 yards receiving. He still had 976 rushing yards and eight touchdowns. He was uh, RB12 in half PPR. In um, full PPR, he was also RB12. But if you look at the game log, too, you know, they gave him 20 carries one time all year. Just once. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, maybe we should get this guy the football more than 20 times. Like, I'm just saying maybe just a little bit uh, in terms of target volume. It was sporadic. Um, you know, there were games where he actually, over a four-game span last year, heading up to the bye, he had just three targets over four games. So I don't know what the hell we're doing here, why we draft a top 10 uh, pick on Bijan Robinson and not utilize him, whatever. Hopefully that'll change this season going forward. Kyron Williams at four, who had a great season. Uh, Kyron Williams in a phenomenal spot there. I do worry about the durability of Kyron Williams. He's one of the guys you can circle and say, perhaps we're chasing last year's value. Uh, But at the same time, you can't ignore how good he was, how explosive he was. And so much of this ties into the health of Matthew Stafford. And as long as he is healthy and upright, this offense works. When he is not, this offense is not going to work. So we'll see how that fares in 24. Jameer Gibbs at five, Jonathan Taylor at six. There's some really good value here. Both of these guys, I think, will go in the late first, early second round. 
feels about right to me of where they belong. Jonathan Taylor is a bit of a leap forward. You could see that value fluctuate, I think, as draft season goes on next year into late August, early September. If Taylor looks good in preseason games, that draft stock will go up. And I think Shane Steichen is positioned with Anthony Richardson to have a Colts team. Remember, <clears throat> this is the team I'm going to talk about all year going into the NFL season is the Colts because I do believe in that offensive line and that quarterback they could make some really interesting things happen. I can't wait to see what they do in the draft, but Steichen is a coach that I have really high expectations for. I think he's terrific. Uh, Travis Etienne at number seven, an up and down season for him, but overall solid. Then you have question marks at eight, Saquon Barkley. You have Rashad White, who is a volume king at nine. Devon Achan cracking the top 10, which is very exciting, but it tells you that people don't see Raheem Mostert as being the guy anymore in this backfield moving forward. Isaiah Pacheco, uh, has really stepped up in the second half here for the Chiefs and become the guy. But again, he has been a, a dude that runs really hard, does not avoid contact. Therefore, the injuries have kind of mounted up on him from time to time. And then Ken Walker at 12, hanging on by a thread at this spot. So as you can see, you know, until we start factoring in some of these rookies and where they land, RB1 is a little dicey. This is why I want to come back to early wide receivers yet again. If you want to take McCaffrey at the top, I get it. That's cool. But after McCaffrey, B. John Robinson, you can make the argument, Brees Hall, okay. <clears throat> Those three guys, I think, are capable of being first-round talents. The rest of this group, I don't see. I don't see a first-round guy from 4 to 12. I don't see it anymore. I know Jonathan Taylor's done it. I know Saquon Barkley's mm -hmm. done it. But that's living in the past. And I'm not chasing the past here. I'm trying to look to the future. And yeah. I don't see a situation where those guys are a good first-round investment. <sighs> In the second round, we can have that conversation. But, Matt, I want to have that conversation with you because these are big names. These are names that yes. were drafted in the first round that people have built fantasy teams on that have won fantasy championships on the backs of. But this is 2024 now. Do you see these names being first-round caliber-worthy picks? It's a great question. You make a great point. I grew up listening to Eric B and Rakim. It ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. So I'm with you on the whole look forward, not that. But I could see someone taking Jonathan Taylor in the first round. I could see someone that's really high on Jacksonville taking it to the end. But after that, no, no, I'm with you. It's a, it's a hard, hard sell, especially with the way the league is going, the way play is going, and the conversations you and I have had to, to really move away from this RB-centric mindset when we're drafting. So outside of those names you mentioned, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in accord with you here. The second round opens up far more discussion, though. It does. By the way, you think Saquon Barkley gets paid in full? See what I did there? Eric I B. and Rakim. Yeah. See? Sure. See that? Yeah. All the way. See, you, mm -hmm. can, you can take the Brooklyn and the Queens out of, you know, uh, the, or the boys out of Brooklyn and Queens. You can't take the Brooklyn and Queens out of the boys. That's, that's just a fact. All right, let's get to the RB2s here. James Cook, an interesting piece because... There were some flashes of James Cook being a really dynamic fantasy asset. And there were some flashes of him not getting the football enough unknown. So he's kind of drifting here at 13, which I understand. Josh Jacobs. Look, Zamir White played so well last year. I don't know if Josh Jacobs is going to be back around. I, I, I got to be honest. Like, that could be a piece that could be on the move. Alvin Kamara at 15. Look, Kamara, I think people were very pleased with what they got out of Alvin Kamara. And I would be as well. Um, I understand New Orleans has a lot of problems. We've talked about them at length, but he still finishes a top 10 running back. In PPR, he was RB9, so I think this ranking is far too low. If I'm looking at Kamara or Pacheco or Kamara or Kenneth Walker, it's, it's not even close. Like, I'm taking Alvin Kamara, like, especially in PPR leagues, which is basically what people are playing most of the time nowadays. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, mm -hmm. again, we just don't know what that Patriots offense is going to look like yet, so that's going to be a work in progress. David Montgomery, you see falling all the way to 17, which makes a lot of sense. So despite the touchdown equity, and despite the fact Montgomery's going to be around, I think it was pretty clear that in the second half of the season, Jameer Gibbs looked like the guy. Montgomery will be there. He'll still have a role. He'll still cap Jameer Gibbs from being maybe a top three running back. But Gibbs is a special talent. Gibbs is the PPR guy. Gibbs is the explosive back. So Montgomery's going to have to take a step backwards. James Conner. Another year on James Conner's um, resume, I don't know if that's really good for mm -hmm. investment potential, although he did have some good games towards the end of the season where he started to look like himself. I just don't think it's a great investment. Uh, then you have Joe Mixon. It's hard to really gauge Joe Mixon's season because Joe Burrow wasn't around. Uh, continuing on here, you've got uh, Tony Pollard slipping all the way to 20 on this early list, which I think is fascinating. Um, I think that's too far. I think that's too far down. Derrick Henry... 
we'll see where he lands. We're waiting to find out about Derrick Henry. Aaron Jones, who did nothing between week one and week 16, and then all of a sudden looked really good in the playoffs and down the stretch in the last two games. Uh, what Doesn't are we going to think out of him? I don't know. That's a big unknown. Javante Williams, Tajay Spears, I think that's a guy we'll talk about more in hour two who might have uh, the arrow pointing upward. And then when you're looking at the RB3 list, some interesting names here. DeAndre Swift at 25, Najee Harris at 26, Nick Chubb at 27. Now, Chubb, obviously, it's going to be a tough sell. We're going to have to wait and see how he comes back. So far, reports have been good, but again, that is a very serious knee injury. He is a very serious dude, though, so we'll see how he rehabs. Najee Harris, he's a boring volume guy, but, you know, speaking of boring guys, Arthur Smith is now the OC, so that's just depressing. Let's not talk about that. Uh, Brian Robinson, sorry, Steelers fans. You know it's depressing. I know it's depressing. Let's not depress ourselves. Brian Robinson, Jr. at 28, Raheem Mostert at 29. Austin Eckler at 30, again, the unknown here of where he's going to end up, but that's more of a placeholder ranking. Jalen Warren at 31, Samir White at 32. He is going to fly up draft boards as mm -hmm. soon and rankings everywhere as soon as Josh Jacobs' decision is made. He looked terrific. And then you have Khalil Herbert, Jerome Ford, Chuba Hubbard, and Devin Singletary, kind of the early ranking guys. Now, rookies are going to change this dynamic a lot, but as you can see, folks, just like this year, there was guys like Raheem Mostert, Guys like Kyron Williams, guys who showed up, balled out at the running back position, just to name a few, Devon Achan, another one of those guys. That's just a couple guys off the top of my head. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be replacement value on the waiver wire. Remember that and invest in wide receivers, big quarterbacks, and tight ends. Running back can be found. We come back. We're going to find the wide receiver way. right here on the best Super Bowl is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back to back at least point one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs, but I bet on it. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left, the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about evenly played it to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit. Going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. <laughs> the big news here a, a big push for for georgia to get things going as far as legalized sports betting and, and pat i don't want to get people too excited it's not like this is happening this year the senate version and the house version and then they're gonna have to get a couple of people from each chamber together and kind of wrestle out the details of what exactly sports betting in georgia might look like newswire only on sports grid I can tell you, like, Las Vegas is heavy San Francisco um, territory. All right? There are a ton of Niner fans, man, in Las Vegas and, in, in, you know, in, in Nevada, and specifically Reno. Reno, well, Reno's close, obviously, right? So, like, Reno, Reno's numbers will be a little bit different. But a total of 47 and a half. I get it. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the early line and what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not fought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts, and some movement in terms of starting quarterbacks. Pharrell, coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. You have no idea. What the heck the Blazers are doing and what they're doing. In game live. Just prime the time. Yard for a grand slam. The bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to 2 baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race late night. We waited for a one and a half. We got a yeah. in like the two and a half. 
jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today. Matt and Joe with you here. We're having a great time behind the scenes, and I really hope that that spills over into the show with which we are tasked. Uh, as we know, uh, what goes in impacts what comes out. I think that's very important. So what we're doing here is we're giving the good food for thought here. We're eating the good nutrition, talking about where we think guys are going to rank for next season, and hopefully on the way out, It'll yield something beautiful. Early 2024 wide receiver rankings. We talked quarterbacks, and I think we're realizing now more than ever to tie in the wide receiver to the quarterback play outside of the obvious because it really shows what a quarterback can do, where a quarterback can go. So let's tie the conversation and open it up to the wide receivers. We'll start at number one. Joe, the consensus has Tyreek Hill. Is that right? It's not wrong. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how after this year you can't have him rank there. He did finish his – well, I mean, he finishes wide receiver two in half PPR. In full point PPR, also uh, wide receiver two. Look, the first 10 games of the season were just absurd. I mean, he was yes. just so good. He was in that top uh, – he had two bad games over that stretch. Other than that, he was wide receiver four or better in almost all of them uh and then down the stretch he did struggle week 16 17 18 in the fantasy playoffs he finishes wide receiver 16 wide receiver 28 and then wide receiver 10 mm-hmm. against the buffalo bills so you know that is the only thing now i know they're facing dallas defense the baltimore ravens defense um you know when you're trying to draft wide receivers i think it's not just the wide receiver you're talking about but you're also the quarterback and i think it's you know it's tying in all those pieces and details to try to get the best consensus pick you can so McCaffrey at number one I get that's probably going to be the consensus number one I I can't fight against it I just you know it's it it is what it is as the kids like to say but after this you know I think CD Lamb personally is the guy that I would put at one um this was a guy that we've been waiting for for so long to come into his own he kind of had the opposite season of Tyreek Hill where it was a really slow start he was at one point the most traded asset in fantasy football CD Lamb somewhere after the first six weeks of the season. People were out, they were done, they were frustrated, they didn't want it. Hmm. After that stretch, I mean, he ended up with 1,749 receiving yards of 135 receptions. Um, he had 14 touchdowns, he had some monstrous games, and he had them when it mattered most. So unlike Tyreek Hill, who faded in the last three weeks in the fantasy playoffs, you're talking about a guy who finishes wide receiver nine, wide receiver one, and wide receiver two over the last three games. So. I would put CeeDee Lamb ahead of Tyreek Hill and ahead of Justin Jefferson going into this year because we still have that unknown. Now we'll see if Kirk Cousins comes back. Jefferson being back at number one, I got no problem with. Tyreek Hill also a little older than these guys. So for me, you know, looking at kind of the overall picture, Lamb and Jefferson, we can flip-flop them back and forth. But I think Hill is really the third guy for me, not the one. I understand why he's the consensus one. I get it. It's just an easy thing to plug in there. But at the same time, you also can put in Jamar Chase, who I thought was going to win Offensive Player of the Year this year. And I was wrong about that. I'll take the L. I will never know because we didn't get Joe Burrow playing. And if we got Joe Burrow playing healthy, if we could just get Burrow and Chase healthy for an entire season together, I would be so happy. That's all I want. That's all I want for Christmas this year is those two guys healthy for 17 games playing together because I think it would be magical. You just haven't gotten it yet quite at the NFL level. But Chase is another guy I think you put at this list. Now, as you look here, all these guys are first round talents in my opinion, including Amon Ross and Brown at number five. If you're Surely. in full point PPRs and you are in that middle of a draft, I can't think of a better investment than Amon Ross and Brown. He is so steady, Matt, every single week. You know what you're getting in terms of the target volume. You know how many hundred yard games he's going to have, which is a crap ton. You know that he has touchdown equity. He had 10 last year. He saw 164 targets last season, 1,515 yards, uh, an incredible amount of, uh, of volume. 164 targets is enormous, not to mention the 119 receptions. So 
to me, Amon Ross St. Brown might be the best number four, five, six overall pick that you could possibly make. And I think he is going to go behind these guys. So the guys that you see ahead of him, Hill, Lamb, Jefferson, Chase, throw in McCaffrey. All of a sudden, guess what? We're in the middle of the draft. In the middle of the draft, you're going to give me Amon Ross St. Brown. I'm going to take him. And I think he is that quintessential value on the board. So let's talk about that because I think that he is still undervalued and underappreciated. Do you think he is? Because it seems like, although he's now moved up in this elite territory, I feel like people still have a hard time calling him elite, and I don't think they should have a problem with that anymore. You're talking about Amon Ross St. Brown, are we not? Yeah, Amon okay. Ross St. Brown. I, I just Why want to double check. three it. on the season in PPR. I mean, what here's are you the doing thing, here, folks. Well, 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 here it is. And we had the conversation. Again, the public a lot of times dilutes the drink, and we need to be aware of that. Look at the names ahead of him and make a conversation. You got to take one out. Who is it going to be? That's the reason why I think you see him in fringes. But I think the the well tuned fan understands what is coming. I want to move to the guy at number seven, and I want to play a game with you. Help me out here. In a hypothetical world, I'm, I'm on the turn. I have 12 and one. Can I end up with Garrett Wilson and Aaron Rodgers? And if so, where would I have to draft these guys respectively to, to make that a part of my fantasy football team for next season. Uh, well, look, and don't I make that face. Right. Don't make that face. Joe, Joe, full disclosure, folks. No, no, Joe is a no. huge Aaron Rodgers distractor. He despises he them. Does. Full disclosure yeah. for me. Hang on. I grew up watching the New York Jets hurt a lot of my friends. I loathe and despise that organization for that reason. But I believe that with Aaron Rodgers at the helm, this is an exciting football team. We talked about the dynamic that they can produce. So with that said, I want Wilson and Rodgers. How do I make it happen, Joe? Well, Rodgers will be free in single quarterback leagues. and super flex Fair leagues, it'll be a little bit more complicated. Uh, but Rodgers will be free. Um, I still would rather have Jordan Love. I would still have a lot of those guys mm-hmm. that take over him. Uh, Where's but Wilson? Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is a guy I want to talk about. Because you see A.J. Brown at six, Garrett Wilson at seven. Mm-hmm. If Rodgers is healthy, and mm-hmm. all joking aside here in terms of who likes who and whatever. But, like, look, look just so everybody knows, my, my disdain for Aaron <laughs> Rodgers goes back to his college days. <laughs> So I'm not a bandwagon guy. I didn't just, you know, show up the last couple of years and get on the hate wagon. No, no, no. This goes back to the college days. It goes back to the NFL draft when he was pouting there in the room. I remember the pouting. A lot of people forget the pouting. Just be happy you got drafted. Anyway, gee, I wonder why he pouted. You know, it's funny. You look back on it now. He's, maybe there were some questions a little bit about the dude of why he maybe fell in the draft. Maybe we can get some still shots of the pouting. Maybe we can get that for next week's show for the Super Bowl's Action Spectacular. By the way, four hours oh, of me, boy. Matt Stryker, Craig Mish, and Davis Maddock next Sunday. That's going to be something. For your eyes and ears. That sounds pretty fun. amazing to me. But Garrett yeah. Wilson is that guy to circle because I do believe Garrett Wilson has the talent, the work ethic, all the intangible qualities to be a guy who could finish one at this list. And I know that saying, oh, finish one. There's a lot of qualities that he has, like Devontae Adams, right? And we saw Adams dominate with Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers tends to be a guy who is going to get the football to the guy he wants to get the football to. Mm-hmm. And that guy's going to be Garrett Wilson. I mean, even this year, what Garrett Wilson did with the quarterback play that he had, I mean, oh, it was so bad, you know, but he still somehow managed 1,000 yards receiving. I don't know how that happened. He only had three touchdowns because the Jets only had like 12 all year. But still, Garrett Wilson is a guy on this list you want to circle because he might be the best – buy low dynasty asset you can have because there's also uncertainty of okay if Aaron Rodgers does come back plays well what does the year look like after that so Garrett Wilson's in an interesting spot because we're hopeful for 2024 but outside of 2024 the long-term value of Garrett Wilson is a huge question mark we just don't know because we don't know how long Rodgers plays how well he plays or who's next after him and that's a lot of question marks surrounding a guy in a long-term asset Then there's Puka Nakua at eight, who had a phenomenal season. I think he's a great investment. I mean, Puka plays hard, and those guys sometimes do pick up some injuries, but Puka was a revelation. I mean, a game-changing guy. We were on him at the end of draft season. We talked about him. Derek Brown came on the show and talked about his – it was the first segment I think we did with Derek where he was talking about, hey, before your league kicks off, pick up this guy Puka Nakua. And guess what? He was right. DJ Moore at nine, his value is going to tie heavily into where Justin Fields is. Then you have the two 49ers guys, Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel. This feels about right for these two guys. And Devontae Adams, who, again, 
we have to see how the Raiders kind of stack up, what they're going to do at quarterback, because I just don't think Aiden O'Connell is going to be that guy. Call me crazy. I just don't crazy. see that happening. Crazy. But look, crazy. wide receiver one is very healthy. I think you can make a case for the top seven guys here, all being first round selections. And when you add in McCaffrey, there's your top eight. And I think that's a very easy thing. You can put B. John Robinson and Brees Hall at nine and 10. And there's your top 10 guys right there. And then after that, you can start to have the conversations about the Jonathan Taylors. You can start to have the conversations of some of these other players in there. But as you can see, the first round right now, it's kind of a top 10 that's very strong. And after that, it becomes a little bit of an open season. All right. So open season is a great way to discuss the next tier here because open season is where we hunt. Let's go to this next tier and have the conversation. There's a name that jumps out to me at 15. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'll let you start off. Olave is the beginning of this next tier. Yeah, Olave at 13, a guy with a ton of talent, uh, inconsistency sometimes from the quarterback play. You saw it last year, uh, but the talent is there. He's going to be one of these frustrating guys, and I don't think it's going to get less frustrating. I'd still want him, but I think as a wide receiver too, it makes a little bit more sense there. Nico Collins, this is the name to circle here on this list. This guy played like a wide receiver one last year down the stretch. This guy looked like a dude in the playoffs. Now, granted, and it's unfortunate, it did kind of stall out there against the Ravens, but look, the Ravens are a great defense. But this guy right here, 1,297 receiving yards on 109 targets, 80 catches, 8 touchdowns, and he did miss some time here. He missed two games last year. He only played in 15 regular season games. Keep that in mind. To me, Nico Collins is closer to Garrett Wilson than he is to number 14 on this list. So I would be highlighting him, circling him as a tremendous value. So if you do take McCaffrey or B. John Robinson or Brees Hall in the first round, Collins would be a perfect prototypical wide receiver one who isn't being valued yet as a wide receiver one. Michael Pittman, it. another guy too, free agent. So we got to see where he lands, but I would be hard pressed to think that he does not end up back with the Colts. So let's keep that in mind. Mike Evans, another guy, too, free agent. We're waiting for Baker Mayfield, a lot of question marks. Stephon Diggs, I mean, his season fell apart after the first six weeks. We've talked about it on this show numerous times. Keenan Allen, another year older. DK Metcalf, Jalen Waddle. Waddle looking for a bounce back with health. Still a good buy low candidate. Amari Cooper, who is the quarterback for the Browns? We guess it's Deshaun Watson. But Joe Flacco certainly made Amari Cooper more valuable, in my opinion. Rushy Rice, way too low at 22. This is absurd. He should be up at 16. Uh, Tank <laughs> Dell at 23. The size That's is what's right. going to limit him. So I think this is a good ranking for him at 23. And then Cooper Cup all the way at 24. Why? Because Cooper Cup can't stay on the field. Now, if we close out here, the wide receiver three group in here, you've got Devonta Smith at 25, T. Higgins at 26, Zay Flowers, Calvin Ridley, Drake London, Jaden Reed, who had a really strong second half, Christian Kirk, Jordan Addison, George Pickens, Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Hopkins and Chris Godwin. The guys to circle here are 29 and 30. It's Drake London and Jaden Reed. If you get quarterback play in Atlanta, Atlanta could be special and so could Drake London. More on him later on in the second half. And then wide receiver four, Jackson Smith and Jigba at 37. Another guy with Tyler Lockett probably on his way out. JSN could really elevate quickly. Christian Watson, we'll talk about him in hour two as well at 38. Uh, then you have Deontay Johnson, Cortland Sutton, Lockett, Marquise Brown, Mike Williams, Jacoby Myers, Gabe Davis, Josh Downs, Adam Thielen, and Jamison Williams. So this is where the rookie wide receiver class is going to push in. Marvin Harrison Jr. is an all-world talent. He is going to hit the ground running and dominate right away. He is going to crack wide receiver 124. We'll come back with Scout of the Day on Sports Day. Super Bowl is set in Vegas. We get a rematch from just a few years ago. The only consistency in the playoffs has been Travis Kelsey. Brock Purdy, you know, back to back, at least point one touchdown pass, right? You can't win MVP with one touchdown yeah. pass. I hate the Chiefs, but I bet on them. This is going to be a game that is played inside a field goal now from a spread perspective. All that matters is there's one game left the big game. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Purdue 
on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about even the equated to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Get to the big news here. A, a big push for, for Georgia to get things going as far as legalized sports betting. And, and Pat, I don't want to get people too excited. It's not like this is happening this year. The Senate version and the House version, and then they're going to have to get a couple of people from each chamber together and kind of wrestle out the details of what exactly sports betting in Georgia might look like. Newswire. Only on Sports Grid. I can tell you, like, Las Vegas is heavy San Francisco um, territory. All right, there are a ton of Niner fans, man, in Las Vegas and in, in you know, in, in Nevada, and specifically Reno. Reno, well, Reno's close, obviously, right? So, like, Reno, Reno's numbers will be a little bit different, but the total of 47 and a half. I get it. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. We'll look at the Heisman the Trophy early line. and what it all means individual success. You should have tried to get something for Anthony Rendon. Not bought at the deadline. Newswire. We're getting a lot of news trades, cuts. And some movement in terms of starting quarterback, Pharrell, quarterback. coast to coast. I want to watch great players make buckets and win games. Game time decisions. You have no idea what the heck the Blazers are doing and what they in are. game live Just prime put time. Yard for a grand slam. In the bottom of the fourth inning in a 12 to two baseball game. We got football scores going on at Wrigley right now. Sports race late night. Bad. We waited for a one and a half. We got paid. Yeah. Yeah. Did like the two and a half. Yeah. Jumped on. There's no taking weeks off in golf betting ever. These are the best weeks to bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Hi, right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today. Matt and Joe with you here. And just pulling back the curtain, you know, during the break, Joe and I talking wrestling, talking big WrestleMania controversy. Joe, big Cody Rhodes guy. I'm in the camp of saying, look, I understand bringing The Rock in, what that does for national, international attention. And it brings us to our stat of the day because all we started the show about international, national attention coming into the wagering world with the Super Bowl. So now let's tie it all together with a Super Bowl-related stat, if you will, because all eyes are on one particular player. Joe? Well, I wanted to kind of, you know, just put this out there because I did talk about Kelsey not being the number one tight end anymore, potentially, in fantasy. But I want to give his flowers uh, there, too. I want to give this man his respect because he has earned it. How about this stat from Travis Kelsey, who's had a terrific playoff run? Kelsey has eight career playoff games with 100-plus receiving yards, which ties Jerry Rice for the most in NFL history. Jerry Rice, folks, this guy plays tight end. An incredible career. First ballot Hall of Famer. Travis Kelsey is that dude. Mm -hmm. Also, that dude is my friend Cody Rhodes right here. Look at him right there. There's my boy Cody. We're going to finish the story. I don't care about The Rock. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I care about is Cody Rhodes. Uh, winning the belt. I don't care which belt it is anymore. I'm over it. I was very upset on Friday. So that's it. A pretend pretend reward will will make you happy. Listen, that right? The Star Wars generation, a pretend reward that doesn't exist. Like you're not my generation too. This this (laughs) is so hard. It is so hard to be a good guy, to be a face in the world of professional wrestling for a year, let alone several. The dude has earned it. The dude has done his duty. He has done his job. He has had some great performances, great matches. He's a total package, not like Lex Luger. And I'm telling you right now, Cody Rhodes, I bought tickets for night two of WrestleMania thinking you're going to be there. If you're not there, I already bought WrestleMania night one tickets. Either way, I'm going to be there supporting my guy because that's what I do. 
not like Matt Stryker. He's a heel. No, no. He doesn't support anybody. He doesn't. The question up. is, he, can he beat him I'm for real? Up. That's always the question. Can he beat him I'll for real? I'll probably Cody before he beat Roman for real. FSP Hour 2 after this. Coming up now.